Well, good morning, and welcome to the Executive Office of the American College of Dentists. This is a special location and a very special day, as today, this very day, August 20th, is the birthday or the anniversary of the founding of the American College of Dentists, and today we are officially 101 years old. Well, the executive offices have had a long history. The executive office of the American College of Dentists has had many homes in its 100 plus year existence. Early on, documents and files were housed in the private offices of individuals who served as the secretary of the college. Dr. Arthur Davenport Black was the first secretary of the college, and he served in that capacity from 1920 to 1922. The executive office at that time was essentially little more than a file drawer in Dr. Black's office at Northwestern University Dental School in Chicago, Illinois. The second secretary was Dr. Albert Leonard Midgley, who held this position from 1922 to 1935. During his tenure, the college grew, and the relevant files were housed in now a five-drawer cabinet in Dr. Midgley's private office in Providence, Rhode Island. The third and longest-serving secretary was Dr. Otto W. Brandhorst, who held this position for 35 years. When he first assumed the secretarial duties of the college, his private academic office was in the Lister Building, located at 4500 Olive Street in St. Louis, Missouri. In 1940, Dr. Brandhorst felt as though he needed more space to administrate the affairs of the college. And at that time, a new building was being erected at, on Maryland Avenue. Dr. Brandhorst petitioned to move the central office to this location. And so it happened. In 1953, after concluding an eight-year tenure as Dean of Washington University School of Dentistry, Dr. Branhorst was asked by the Board of Regents to consider full-time employment with the college. After much deliberation and consideration and consultation with his family, he agreed to devote full-time to college affairs, and the college central office was relocated to four Two to one, Lindell Boulevard in St. Louis. The activities of the college continued to increase in both scope and complexity, and the opportunity arose to move the college headquarters to the fourth floor of a brand new building located at 4236 Lindell Boulevard. The Board of Regents approved the plan, and in 1962, they voted to designate this office space as the central office of the American College of Dentists, and that this office be permanently located in the Gateway City. It was said that this office was the pride and joy of Dr. Branhorst and his faithful secretary, Ms. Fern Crawford, as well as the many fellows of the college who visited the location. Dr. Brandhorst relinquished the secretaryship on January 1, 1969, when Dr. Robert J. Nelson assumed this position as secretary of the college. At the meeting of the college in New York in November 1969, it was announced that the central office of the American College of Dentists was to be moved to Bethesda, Maryland. This occurred in March and April of 1970. The new address of the American College of Dentists was Suite 52 November 7315 Wisconsin Avenue in Bethesda, Maryland. This iconic building was referred to as the Air Rights Building. The Air Rights moniker came from how the 1960s era buildings were developed as an air rights project above the former B&O Railway right of way. The right-of-way now, the Capitol Crescent Trail, travels in a tunnel underneath the buildings and under Wisconsin Avenue. The central office would remain in that location from 1970 until 1991. In that year, and made possible by the successful campaign for the 90s, the foundation purchased three condominium suites at Diamond Farms Office Park, located on Quince Orchard Boulevard in Gaithersburg, Maryland. The settlement date for the property was recorded as November 8, 1991, and the corresponding move took place on December the 2nd, 1991. 
These are the three contiguous condominiums purchased at that time. They served the college well, as well as the foundation, for almost 30 years. And this was very important in controlling the ever-escalating real estate cost in the national capital area. At the urging of our executive director in 2010, the college began to consider a property acquisition that would satisfy two principal concerns. Diversification of the organizational investments in the aftermath of the 2008 financial collapse, and the purchase of a building that would be both benefiting the college's stature and which could serve as a future headquarters with a more central location in suburban Washington. After casting a rather wide net initially, the focus was soon narrowed to the greater Rockville area, and it provided the best combination of realistic pricing, metro access, and close proximity to multiple businesses, hotels, restaurants, and county services. The task of locating a property that is suitable fell upon Executive Director Dr. Stephen A. Rawls. A number of sites were considered, but in the end, the building at 103 North Adams was chosen as clearly the best fit. The nearby Rockville Town Square features unique and locally owned shops and eateries in a pedestrian-friendly setting, complete with public gathering spaces and regular entertainment events. Greetings, I'm Stephen Rawls, President of the American College of Dentists Foundation, and I would like to welcome you to the new home of the American College of Dentists and the Foundation. This is made more special because today is the 101st anniversary of the college's founding. It is indeed a happy birthday, thanks to the very generous gifts of three donors totaling one and a half million dollars. In 2013, the foundation purchased a commercial office building in Rockville, Maryland. Our sincere appreciation is extended to Dr. Patricia Blanton, the late Dr. Jerome Miller, and an anonymous donor who made this possible. This purchase helped the foundation better prepare for the future, not only by diversifying investments, but providing an outstanding facility that was destined to become the new home of the American College of Dentists and the American College of Dentists Foundation. Welcome, I'm Dr. Leo Rouse, president of the American College of Dentists. I would like to start with a brief history of the site. Between 1790 and 1821, the property at 103 North Adams Street was part of the Rob Higgins Ward House located next door. In 1921, what is now the college's new executive office was sold to Rocksville's postmaster, John Adamson, Jr. From there, accounts differ as to what happened to the property until 1985, when the current building was constructed. The Rob Higgins Ward House at 101 North Adams Street is one of the last 18th century structures in Rockville and is a rare example of hall and parlor architecture. In its long history, it has been home to tavern keepers and merchants and now houses a law office. The college's new home was once the site of that property's outbuildings and thought to be most likely location of the stable. A small portion of the original brick driveway still greet visitors at the sidewalk. The well located on the property is one of the oldest in the county and is recognized and protected as a historic structure. In an effort to buffer the residential West End neighborhood and West Montgomery Avenue historic district from the developing town center, commercial construction that mimic early architectural styles was allowed in the 1970s and 1980s. With our building constructed as a neo-colonial structure, throughout the renovation process, the ACD has worked to not only preserve this intention, but to improve upon it by looking to historic structures in the immediate vicinity to choose appropriate design elements that better complement the streetscape. I think that you will agree that the location is idyllic. I would like to take this time to officially recognize Ms. Susan Pittman, ACD's Operations Director, for her dedicated service to the Rockville community that undoubtedly made our renovation efforts far less stressful. Susan is widely known as a courageous community advocate and is committed to the preservation of Rockville's unique history. 
After the building was purchased, plans were made for renovation and eventual occupation. Architect Glenn Reynolds of Boyds, Maryland was chosen for the project. His knowledge of the historically significant properties in the area and his reputation for preservation made him a natural choice. Once the architectural renderings were approved, the contract went out for bidding and the renovation project was awarded to Rob Gilroy of RCG Homes. The renovation began as scheduled on January 2, 2021 with the proposed move of July 1st. Rob and his team of professionals delivered on the promise of a high quality renovation, executed to standard, on time and under budget. We are delighted that the selection process delivered Rob as our master craftsman. The renovation plan included a legacy walkway which honors our fellows past and present and their contributions to our organization and its mission of advancing excellence, ethics, professionalism, and leadership. The exterior design is characteristically colonial and every effort has been expended to ensure that the design is complementary to the homes in the historic West End neighborhood. While colonial style house plans cover a broad spectrum of architectural movements and geographic locations, we chose to show influences from the simple structures built along the East Coast during the colonial, revolutionary, and early republic areas in American history. Multi-paned, double-hung windows with shutters and panel doors with side lights topped with rectangular transoms illustrate our commitment to colonial architecture. The exterior renovation reveals a simple grace and timeless appeal. While the college has had several homes during its 100-year existence, this is planned to be our final location. We are deeply appreciative of the three philanthropists who made this dream possible. We also extend our sincere appreciation to our executive director, Dr. Gonzalez, who doubled as the project manager and coordinator for this renovation. We would also like to thank Dr. Blanton for engaging with her decorator, Mr. Alan Smith of London, to coordinate the interior design around the furniture selections that the staff had previously requested. I think you will agree that the results are nothing short of magnificent. Good morning. I'm Dr. Patricia Blanton, past president of the American College of Dentists and consultant to the foundation. I would like to join Presidents Rouse and Rawls in welcoming you to the American College of Dentists Executive Office. We hope that you will visit the property and spend some time in the ACD Library, which houses our rare book collection and founding documents. This is our history, and you are an integral part of that history. It seems only fitting that we began our second century of service in a new workplace, a workplace replete with up-to-date technologies and a well-seasoned and committed staff to execute the myriad missions of the college. The renovation design created a 21st century operational environment, not only for the college, but also for the foundation. Many of our renovation goals were functional, aimed at creating spaces that accommodate a flexible working environment and mandates for accessibility. Our other expressed goals were largely aesthetic, reflecting modern color and material as well as technological progress in light, energy, and water efficiency. This thoroughly modern workspace uses smart office furniture. Smart desks can be repositioned for optimum ergonomics, and our standing variants are known to improve focus as well as overall health. And now let's go inside.
Well, good morning and welcome to the American College of Dentists Foundation office. I'm pleased to be with you this morning because the development of the Foundation Office offers the organization the ideal space for strategic planning and launching approved initiatives. A great deal of work is carried out in this setting. Currently, a new publication, Profiles and Prerogatives, a brief history of the leadership of the American College of Dentists is under production. This represents our third major publication in as many years, and we are delighted with the results. Doctors Blanton and Miller envisioned this office as a site to manage foundation projects and secure the funds to underwrite ongoing research efforts. All of the furnishings in this office were made available through a generous contribution from a benefactor who wishes to remain anonymous. The far wall of the Foundation Office is a tribute to the three original benefactors who purchased the building in 2013, and to Dr. Stephen A. Rawls, who was the impetus behind the acquisition and who located this property. As consultants to the Foundation, Drs. Connolly and Blanton will regularly meet here to do the work of the Foundation in our second century of service, and they have great plans for the future of this organization. Both Tom and Pat are masterful fundraisers and have considerable skin in the game, just the way Jerry Miller would have wanted it. The third floor is shared by our friends and esteemed colleagues of the Pierre Fouchard Academy. The Academy moved its headquarters to suburban Washington, D.C. area in July of this year, and by all accounts, this is a continuation of a beautiful friendship and we are delighted that their executive office is co-located in this thoroughly modern space. Their office suite is stunning and beautifully appointed, and we welcome them to the American College of Dentist Foundation building. The library was designed to house our collection of books and periodicals, as well as various artifacts from our past. The room also serves as a conference space with updated audiovisual and remote conferencing capability. This well-designed and beautifully appointed room makes possible a myriad of presentations and meeting styles, while also providing a quiet place to research and study. Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Rawls. I'm the president of the American College of Dentists Foundation. And it is my sincere pleasure to welcome the board members, their spouses, staff, friends, our esteemed colleagues from PFA and the ICD, and our special guests from the civic leadership of the city of Rockville. This ribbon cutting ceremony represents a symbolic and historic opening of our new headquarters of the American College of Dentists and the American College of Dentists Foundation. We're also very excited to have the Pierre Fouchard Academy with us. Importantly, as Teresa mentioned earlier today, this day marks the 101st anniversary of the college's founding in Boston. Little did we know at that time what would happen. We've come a long way from a few folders lounging in a file drawer of Dr. Arthur Black's Chicago office. Our, the journey's been rather circuitous. We started with the physical office first in St. Louis under the direction of Otto Brandhorst, who was our longtime secretary and dean of Washington University at St. Louis. From there, about 1970, actually in 1970, we moved the office to the Air Rights Building on Wisconsin Avenue in Bethesda. Then, in 1991, our foundation purchased three contiguous office condominiums in the Diamond Farms Office Park of Gaithersburg, Maryland. 
and those served us well for nearly 30 years as our offices. We find ourselves here today with our move to Rockville complete, and we are most pleased to be here. Rockville presents the best combination of metro access, freeway convenience, multiple uh, businesses, hotels, restaurants, and county services for our use. And this particular building in Rockville is by far the best fit for the American College of Dentists and the American College of Dentists Foundation. As you'll see if you've toured the building, it is befitting of the class and stature of the resident organizations. It supremely fills the operational needs and requirements now and for the foreseeable future. And I should note that a new home like this doesn't happen just because we wish it so. This building was made possible by the profound generosity of three individuals whose contributions totaling one and a half million dollars enabled the foundation to purchase this building in 2013. And specifically, I'm talking about Dr. Patricia Blanton, who's with us today, the late Dr. Jerome Miller, who's represented by Kay Miller, and an anonymous donor. We, I would say that we owe them a big debt of gratitude and we extend our sincere and most sincere appreciation to them. And yes, let's have a round of applause for those three donors. And while we're at it, I would also like to especially uh, thank and congratulate Dr. Teresa Gonzalez, our executive director, Susan Pittman, our operations director, and the entire staff who worked so tireless, tirelessly for the last several years to make this day possible. And so they did a tremendous job. There was so much done behind the scenes that we won't even see. And so let's give Dr. Gonzalez and the staff a round of applause as well. Yeah, here, 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 here. And with that, let us celebrate this landmark achievement and enjoy this special moment. This building represents a rock solid foundation from which to build and shape the next hundred years of, ad of advancing excellence, ethics, professionalism, and leadership in dentistry. I'm excited about it and I hope you are too. Thank you, let's have a wonderful day. And before I leave, I'd like to turn it over to Margie Graff representing the city of Rockville for her comments. Thank you very much. I'm Margie Graff, President and CEO of the Rockville Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the city and the chamber, we congratulate you on your move and welcome you to Rockville. We're excited to have you. Um, we have a couple of things we're gonna give you right now. First, I'd like to introduce Ken Reichert right behind you. He's representing Senator Ben Cardin's office, Ken. Uh, we have a citation for you, the grand opening here Okay. It's from the senator, and it says, The Honorable Benjamin L. Cardin, United States Senator of Maryland, Certificate of Special Recognition presented to the American College of Dentistry on the occasion of your ribbon-cutting ceremony and grand opening. And it's signed, Senator U.S. Senator Ben Cardin, uh, August the 20th. Yes. Thank you very much. I'll shake you, your hand, but I'll give you a bump. Okay, okay. that's good. Here, I'll get that to you. Should I just put it by the door? Okay, and um, Senator Cheryl Kagan could not make it today, so this is a citation from her office. Citation presented to American College of Dentists. Congratulations on your grand opening in Rockville. We are bracing ourselves, but we have a filling that you will brighten our community. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood, presented July 20th, Cheryl Kagan, Maryland State Senate, District 17. Thank you very much, and we have plenty of filling material. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now um, we can cut the ribbon. Now we need this tight, right? Keep it caught. Tell me when. Thank you.
Okay, let's let's have a toast to the American College of Dentists, the American College of Dentists Foundation, and to the other organizations here, Pierre Fouchard Academy and International College of Dentists. Here.